Hello peeps. Today I'm going to start building my new A-pillars for my car. And taking into account the old A-pillars, they worked out really well considering that I made them seven years ago. Seven years, seven years, that's a big number. And what's happened in the seven years? Well, they've started to come apart, but that's expected because wear and tear, not to mention they're not sitting in a nice pristine car where the biggest subwoofer in the car is a six or an eight inch driver. I've had as many as eight 15s in this car here that you see behind me. Eight 15s, that is a lot of speakers. And uh, with that amount of vibration, um, these have survived, these eight pillars here have survived um, six builds. I've had, uh, Four fifteens, then another four fifteens, and then eight fifteens, and then four fifteens again, and then four fifteens in a fourth order box, and that's the box I have now that I've had for the last three years. And I don't foresee me changing that sub box anytime soon. Not to mention it would probably kill me to, to finish it, <clears throat> or to even start it for that matter. So these ones have cracked a couple in a couple places but this is the nature of fiberglass and uh, time and, and living in a hot environment if you live in a place that gets hot and cold hot and cold it's going to start to wear out but where this is cracking here this is below the dash line you can actually see where the dash is rubbed off on these edges here and you can actually see where i've sunk in this when i built it you can see this dropping edge here and this was done on purpose because it needed to slim line down into the uh, dashboard assembly where you can see these locking mechanisms that it slides into these teeth more than I have. And then up here in this corner, you can see where it's completely cracked away, completely gone. And in these edges up in here, it's also cracked away. But the overall body of it is actually still in pristine condition. And it's because I follow some basic principles when I build these uh, pods, whether it's on the A-pillar or down on the kick panel or on the door panels, or uh, when I build pods for subwoofers. And the basic principles are you build within. You gotta remember that it's not just all the prettiness you see on the outside like me, but it's also what goes on the inside. And as long as you build a nice, clean exterior foundation and you have a nice smoothing edges and stuff uh, you don't have to worry about strength because strength is going to become inherent later on down the road from the inside and I wish I could show you but I'd have to take these apart I'm not ready to take these apart yet because I need to use these for uh, doing a little bit of image care and what image care is is when they sit in the dashboard so as if they were sitting in the dash right now on this side of me image care is how much they face towards the windshield and how much they face towards me and then there's also imaging in the fact of are they going to be pointing down or are they going to be pointing up now i can't take it in terms of them pointing up and towards me because there, each one of these pods on either side is not equal distance from me, my face, my head, or the listener that might be next to me. So image care is figuring out where you're going to create a sweet spot on the dash, or more importantly, the stage. The musical stage is everything. We used to say uh, image is everything, and this was something uh, that became a coined phrase long before image dynamics is, existed, but they definitely marketed it. And there's a good reason because the image dynamics absolutely is about beautiful, perfect imaging and an ultimately a cornucopia of sound coming together um, in a crescendo of perfection. That would be the best description I would give. So we used to do this thing where we would take um, the speaker point <clears throat> and we would take a solid steel bar and have it come straight out of that point 
and then we would figure out <clears throat> how to attach it to the dome light. And why would we do it to the dome light? Well, as long as the dome light is above the shifting area in the car, the shift center, or in that general range, or even if it was just slightly above and in front of where the driver and passenger's heads are, that would also work as well. But over time, people have come to notice a, a variance. And what that variance is, is you can achieve that kind of sound, whether it's facing in this way like this, because this would be pointing not at me, it's actually pointing up and above past me, or in front of me. <clears throat> but you can also achieve that by having it going this way, away from me towards the windshield. So to put this down, so you have your speakers, and you can have them pointing towards me in a, in a variance like this, and so one of them is going to come across this way here, and then the other one's going to be coming up, and they're both going to be coming together at a point someplace in this range here. Now that's one way to do it, but another way to do it is to have it so one of them is pointing out this way towards the windshield, and then the other one is coming out this way. So instead of them pointing more or less in the direction of where I'm sitting, they're going to be pointing towards the windshield and that's how you can create an image um, that will actually what happens is, is the musical speakers they splash across the windshield and there was this uh, genius years ago um, I can't remember his name but one of the guys that worked with him was this guy named David Navone um, and David Navone's a genius and I doubt he'll ever see this video uh, probably because he's really old um, but um, he figured out how to turn a piece of glass into a speaker. And I've got one of the original prototypes. Um, and what it does is, because um, um, I got that kind of thing, um, I just keep it. I don't, I've never used it once. I tried it out once. I had two of them. I tried one of them out and it worked amazing. And then I don't know what happened to that one, but I still have one of the original prototypes. And what it does is it, it has a diaphragm that presses directly against the glass. And then from that, it um, it uh, turns the entire piece of glass into a speaker, kind of like a, a flat tweeter sort of. And it only works in the higher ranges. Uh, doesn't do anything in the mid ranges because there just simply isn't enough power that you could put to it without altering some of the characteristics of the glass. But in all intents and purposes, it turns the glass into a speaker. And so um, it was just a, a principal idea that he came up with of uh, making, uh, it's like, hey, let's see if we can turn a piece of glass into a speaker. And it works on the same, temp uh, the same principle of a, a ribbon tweeter, sort of. Um, now a ribbon is, a, is, a, is typically a type of electrostatic and it's not doesn't work that way you're not electrifying it and nor is there the, the the materials in a piece of standard windshield glass that would work very well on that characteristic but by creating vibration on the glass it allowed it to spread across the glass and it moved at the speed of sound so it was pretty good so if you can get the sound stage musical speakers to play across the glass what you get is you get the creation of sound on both sides. And you kind of get this of a pattern. And I've tried this before in some of my builds. And I, I first learned about it back in, I wanna say in 2000. And then in my uh, uh, SQ build that I had in 2001, my Toyota uh, Corolla FX, FX16, the GTS. Um, I had uh, JL Audio three-way components, not the ones that they sell now, but the ones that had all, all original paper, and then it was a standard silk dome tweeter versus that titanium tweeter they use. Anyway, and um, they played exceptionally well, and I had the, the tweeters that were in the uh, door corner triangles facing towards the windshield. 
and I didn't have any of my speakers in my car facing towards the driver or the passenger. I had a pair of mids that were low in the dash and they pointed out straight out across. And then I had the tweeters pointing away towards the windshields or the windshield. And then I had a pair of six inch mid base drivers in the floors pointing straight up. So we've got music this way, music this way, and music going towards the windshield in the different corners. And that created a sound stage and it turned the glass into a big kind of a um, high range volume, um, high range signal sound stage. And by creating this whole area around it, people felt immersed. Now there's an easier way to do all of that and that is to get a horn, uh, like a compression horn, like what Image Dynamics has in theirs. Uh, one of my friends, Jason Loban, he has a set of these Image Dynamics horns across the lower portion of his dashboard. Underneath, just above the shins, that low down in the dash, no tweeters or anything up above. And when you sit in that car, even with those horns way down there, it sounds like all the music is coming from above the door dash. And it's the same kind of car as this. He has a 2008 or a 2009 Cyan XB, like mine. And I get in that car no matter what I listen to. I could be listening to Boss Skaggs. I could be listening to uh, Otis Redding. Or I could be listening to Busta Rhymes. No matter what I, I'm listening to, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up because I know I'm hearing something that sounds amazing. So image can be created in several different ways. And since I'm using traditional speakers and not compression horns, this is the way I'm going about it.